the recording started. Okay, we're good on that. And then let's get going. All right, so we were talking about our um, pre-webinar question here, and I think we had a really great conversation around that. So I'll, I'll leave that for now, and if Ellen wants to come back to it, we can. So welcome everyone to the fifth webinar of the 2019 Ignis season. Ignis is the Latin word for spark or ignite, and that's exactly what we are hoping to do today, um, to ignite your curiosity and to spark your intellect. This webinar series is brought to you by the Office of Educational Technology and Open Education at the Washington State Board for Community and Technical Colleges. Your hosts today are myself, Alyssa Sells, and my good friend Kelly Neeson from Clover Park Technical. So thanks for joining me today, Kelly. No, thank you for having me. <laughs> yeah, I was so excited when you um, volunteered to co-host with me this, this year. Okay, so our topic today is the dilemma of late work policies, and our presenter is Ellen Freeman. And a big thank you to Ellen for joining us today to share about this topic. I think we've already got a pretty good um, conversation going. Um, so um, we've switched web conferencing tools again this year. So um, we've been getting started with a very brief overview of Zoom and um, just to make sure everybody can find everything. And then we'll hit just a couple of minor housekeeping items. And then I will turn it over to Kelly to intro officially introduce Ellen to you all. So the first thing on our list is for you to all check your audio if you wanna be using your mics <coughs> later. And if you haven't already done so, um, you might need to press the escape key to exit the full screen view and find the audio menu. And um, if you are experiencing any audio trouble or do not have a headset or speakers, you can always call in, in um, by phone instead at one 669-900-6833 and then enter the meeting ID 361-298-378 and then the pound sign and that will get you into the audio with your phone. Please note that all of our webinars are live captioned and you can access those captions by clicking on the CC button in the Zoom toolbar at the bottom of your screen. And I haven't found a hotkey for those yet. So as far as I know, you do need to go to the toolbar to um, enable those. So here are um, just a few Zoom links you mind, might find helpful during the webinar. Um, you can access the Zoom keyboard shortcuts and hotkeys at, um, this is a bit.ly link, it's bit.ly slash Zoom with a capital Z, shortcuts with a capital S. And then if you need to find the Zoom Help Center, you can find that at bit.ly slash Zoom with a capital Z dash help with a capital H. Okay, so um, let's talk about the participant and chat panels. Uh, the participants panel is located near the top right corner of your screen and the chat panel will be uh, located near the bottom right corner of your screen. If you're not seeing those panels, um, all you need to do is click on more in the Zoom toolbar and then our, on participants or chat to add them into your view. And again, if you were in full screen view, you might need to press escape um, before you can um, activate those other panels. Uh, please type your questions and comments into the Zoom group chat as we go, and we'll get to them as soon as we can. Um, I believe Ellen said she was gonna field questions during her presentation today, so um, please do remember to get those questions and comments in as she's speaking. Uh, do please be sure to select everyone from the drop-down menu on the chat when you're sending a message so that we can all see it. And then again, if you do want to go into full screen view, you can click on um, enter full screen and that will pop you into the full screen view and then you can always exit that again by clicking on escape. Okay, so some participant tools you might find useful. Um, you're going to find those in the participants panel and you can raise your hand to ask a question by clicking on the hand icon. And then when it's your turn to speak, when we call on you, simply click the microphone icon to unmute your mic. Um, to cut down on background noise though, please keep your mic muted when you're not speaking. And please also keep your cameras turned off during the webinar for us. Thanks so much. Uh, 
Uh, if you click on more in the participant tools, um, you can find some emoticons to give applause or a thumbs up. So those options are in there as well. Okay, this is um, the last thing, um, just to let you know that the webinar is being recorded and you can find the captioned recording on the ATL blog along with the full IGNIS schedule. And this is um, a bit.ly link also, it's bit.ly slash IGNIS, I-G-N-I-S, all caps, 2019 dash recordings with a capital R. And we'll make sure and get all of those, if Kelly hasn't already, um, while I was talking, we'll get all of those into the chat for you. All right, and without further ado, I am gonna go ahead and turn it over to Kelly to go ahead and introduce Ellen to you. Take it away, Kelly. All righty. Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining us. Ellen Bremen has taught for 17 years with an emphasis on interpersonal communication and public speaking. She is currently faculty in the Communication Studies Department at Highline College. Ellen has earned three national awards for her teaching innovations, and she holds degrees in both communication studies and post-secondary education. Ellen is also the author of Say This, Not That, to Your Professor, 36 Talking Tips for College Success. She is also a returning IGNIS presenter from 2018. Ellen is a CrossFit addict, a crocheter, a kayaker, and an avid television watcher. She lives in Seattle with her husband and two children and I can see her now paddling around the sound in her Nikes crocheting booties while streaming Stranger Things on her cell phone and awesome. maybe even grading late submissions. So welcome <laughs> Ellen. I'm turning it over to you. All right yeah. Ellen I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing and then I'll let you pull up your slides. Okay. okay. It'll be good to go. Wow I have some new ideas now about what I can do in my kayak. <laughs> Right, Kelly's, yeah. anything Kelly has, it's new ideas. <laughs> so they just came out with stra a Stranger Things Lego set, just have to say. Seriously? That, that, yes, and it's amazing and huge and, and incredible. Yes, so. Okay, well, uh, interesting. Okay, so am I, am I good with the sharing? Yeah, it, it looks fantastic. Okay, and I'm just. Um, Oops, you're out of um, presentation view. Okay. It was good, and then you went back to regular slides. Um, okay. Am I good? Yep. Yep. You're good. Yeah, okay. Now it's perfect. All right. Well, thank you everyone so much. I had such a good time last year that I wanted to come back. And because I'm in the communication area and because I write about communication also, I this topic has been one that I feel like I need just, you know, so much collegial support. I've been teaching collectively almost 20 years and it's something that I just, I, I struggle with a lot. And I'm imagining that it's the same for that, you know, we probably all share that. So I will just jump right in. I would really love to say that I have a zero tolerance policy in my syllabus about late work and that I'm, I toe the hard line and I'm firm and zero tolerance, just like, you know, the, just, just like this says, but really what I'm doing is I'm lying. <laughs> I am lying and I envy my colleagues who say that they are truly zero tolerance because then I'll do something like say, oh, you know, so and so I, yeah, I'm so sorry that you just had, you know, insert whatever it is that happened, just email it to me. And, you know, then I end up with this, you know, if I can't get to it immediately, which I really shouldn't be getting to it immediately because my, I do have a policy in the syllabus that says that I, you know, it says I'm zero tolerance, but I also won't grade late work before on time work. And I typically teach four classes in a quarter. So I'm constantly having on time work coming in. So, I mean, there's a contrast, you know, there's a contrast in of itself. So I end up, you know, with this, I mean, we all know how much email we get. So then I've had them email it to me and then it slides further and further down. And at the end of the quarter, I have this inbox mess of late work that I, the onus is now on me to go find. Um, and I, you know, I worry that it's an issue of equity. I can't 
offer, I don't offer, I can't offer it to everybody. It's on a case by case basis. And I want to go back to that. I'm saying that I'm zero tolerance. I have been trying to be zero tolerance. And it, you know, it buries me at the end of the quarter. And it makes me wonder if, um, you know, the, this question of enabling, this is the thing that I've had a really hard time with. So I have, you know, in the years that I've been teaching, I have as I said, I've struggled with this. And so here are some of the things that I've heard colleagues say. So one of my colleagues says that she leaves her Dropbox open for three days past the assignment. The, the points um, that you would lose will increase each day. And after the third day, she won't accept anything. And my question to her was, oh my gosh, then your grading just, does, you know, for three days after that assignment is due, the grading doesn't end. She's like, yep, she goes, but I never get any, I never get any pushback. Um, you know, another colleague said, oh, well, my Dropbox stays open one extra week without penalties. So that's sort of same um, theme. I have a former colleague who said that that they give one free pass on any assignment throughout the term. And I was like, how do you keep track of that? And I don't know that I ever got a good answer because I mean that that would be again that pushes the onus on us to keep track of who was late, who wasn't, who used the pass, who was, who didn't. Um, and then I will be showing you an example of a colleague who um, is a, is zero tolerance with late work, but then points are dropped at the end for recovery. Um, so Alyssa, I am unable to see comments at the same time that I have this in full screen view. Am I doing something wrong? Or I don't know if there are any or if I'm supposed to be seeing them or not. I'm watching them, Alan, and I will forward any questions as they come in. Okay. Um, all right, I just wanna make sure that I'm not missing anything. Yeah. So then um, I have another colleague who has said that at the end of the quarter, she will allow folks to redo whatever they can within a window, which that just, made me feel like I needed a lot of Tylenol and possibly Advil. I mean, the thought of that was just like, wow, that is, it, it, she said very few students actually take her up on it. Um, then there are folks, I mean, I've been in, you know, I've, we've had like um, what we call chat and, chat and choose on this topic, which I proposed. And somebody just was like, yep, late, if it's late, it's late, it's fine, no problem. Um, then I have people that are zero tolerance for real, no late work, no recovery points at the end, no dropped points at the end. And then I have a colleague that said to me really thoughtfully, but Ellen, it's a developmental skill. And I said, well, you know, I could see that for some things, but for this, what, what's, what's the development? Like, what, what happens within the development? Are we... Are we then, you know, while they're developing the ability to not submit work late and to meet deadlines, what's the ramification in the meanwhile, the ramification for them and us? And again, you know, we never really solved it. We did not, we didn't solve it. So what I'm wondering is where do you stand on this spectrum? I mean, as you can see, I've really grappled. It's been, you know, I, I still feel like I don't have the answers, but I'd like to figure them out. Um, so where do you stand? Are you zero tolerance? Are you tolerant? Are you in between? Are you, you know, what is your policy? Go ahead and either raise your hand and we'll call on you. You can answer the question verbally or go ahead and put those answers into the chat. So Marsha is saying my syllabus says late work only for extreme circumstances. So my question is, I, I've done this too. It's like, then are we judge and jury over whose extreme circumstance is more extreme than another? That's where I really struggle. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm trying to like, wait, was this person's crisis compared to this person's crisis? How do you, Marsha, how do you, what do you consider extreme? What do I, I'm just, because I question that for myself too. No tolerance except for emergencies, then everyone gets a break. Loss of life, something unavoidable, family or medical emergency. So Marshall, do, you, do they have to submit something to show that? Yeah, most of the time I, I try to get some kind of doctor's note or you know some kind of proof of some actual thing. Uh, sometimes I'll just take their word for it, but 
I don't have a whole lot of late work really yet. They're, they've kind of gotten used to it just if, you know, if they're late and it's past the deadline, I say, sorry, it's late. You know, it's posted on Canvas. There's a calendar for you. You, you got to pay attention. Right. Yes. So um, no tolerance except for emergencies, then everyone gets a break. So everyone get is can uh, everyone gets a break? What does that mean? <laughs> then the whole um, class gets to submit later. You're asking me, huh? So yes. I, I will tell you that I my syllabus states that I do not accept late work without um, pre-notification unless it's an emergency. But the reality is anytime somebody messages me that they have a reason that they didn't submit the assignment, I let them submit it. And the only true deadline I have in my courses is the last day of the term. I put the basically a zero tolerance policy in my syllabus only as a classroom management tool so that I can plan my grading easily and uh, most students abide by it so when I do get late work that I subsequently accept I just have a minimum amount that I need to grade. Okay so that makes that I I see what you're saying there. Um, so Marcia says, so Sarah says we've had students forge doctor's notes. You know, that this is the thing about, I have, you know, my colleague with the three days also does the, um, you have, have to submit something for, you know, more than three days. And then that makes me feel like, my gosh, you know, I'm, I'm like K through 12, like, you know, I feel like that's such a K through 12 thing. And should I be doing that? you know, do I really want to be doing that at this level? I've really struggled with it. And then I feel guilty because we are all supposed to be adults here. But I, I mean, you know, the students and myself, I'm supposed to be treating them like adults. Um, so I really struggle with it. So Crystal says every assignment has a 24 hour policy. You can be late. Then I, um, and every assignment is open 24 hours past the due date. So this sounds similar to my colleague, not considered late. And I accept two assignments late. They have a week to turn them in and it's 20% off. I drop a few assignments. It's become a real mess. So I, oh my gosh, I feel the same way about my inbox thing. The fact that I won't extend Canvas. And here's something that I have gone to. <laughs> hasn't solved my late work issue, but it has helped me with waking up and the overnight emails a lot. And I started this a long time ago. Is that my... Um, in Canvas, it says 11.59, but the Dropbox is open unpenalized until 5 a.m. It's like, and so a colleague of mine said, so your deadline's really 5 a.m. And I'm like, no. <laughs> I mean, they don't, it's just like this mental thing where they get to feel like they have this grace period, even though it is unpenalized. My deadlines, yes, they are 5 a.m. But it definitely has helped when I don't wake up to, you know, I still wake up to some emails, but I not as, not as many. Um, so let's see, I have no tolerance. Whoops, I scrolled a little too fast. No tolerance probably. Um, oh, okay, so the alternate assignment, which is usually more work for late assignments. So yeah, so there's a, there's one way to go. Um, yeah, I had the same question for Astrid. Did she answer in there? I'm scrolling down. I'm not sure if she saw my post to her. It's a percent penalty. We still want them to get it done. So then um, from Bellingham, I allow any and all late work. My learning outcomes do not contain language around due dates. So do the learning outcomes have, to, I mean, are, are most don't, right? So is that, I mean, is that, do we feel like we could, we, that connection between the learning outcomes and it being an implied soft skill that we, you know, that we're teaching them is that, I mean, that's a really good question. I mean, is that, does it need to be in the learning outcomes? I've actually, I mean, anecdotally speaking, I'm, I've been in a leadership capacity where I vet outcomes that come into Curriculog since 2016. So I've looked at hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of them. Um, and I have had folks that have put that in their learning outcomes. And I always kick back to them and say, are you specifically measuring for this? I'm, and in almost every case, they end up changing it because they realize that they're not. So that's an interesting connection to me. Um, 
All right, so there are a lot of, there are, um, so Alyssa, you're saying your uh, daughter's teacher allows one late assignment per quarter, the students can choose. This reminds me of my colleague where they get like one late pass. And then I just wonder about the tracking of that. Yeah, I don't know, she didn't say. Um, and I only yeah. know because my daughter used her late work pass recently. So I was like, oh, and I was kind of paying attention because I knew you were going to talk about this topic. So I was like, oh, yeah. that's policy. I think um, it's easier to track maybe face to face because I, I think actually I used to do this to give a late work pass at the beginning and the student could staple it to um, their work when they turned it in so that I knew it was late and then I would keep the pass. But I don't know how to manage that online. That'd be a lot harder, I think. So from um, L. Servan, last quarter tried something new, accepted late work up to three days from its original due date, half credit only. So, right, because then if like, then if they don't turn it in, and that's why I feel like I end up saying, okay, just email it to me. Because if they don't turn it in, then they don't learn that, they don't learn that thing, but then the tracking. Also, my colleague who does the three days, also similar, she is um, on the tenure in the tenure process, and one thing they came up is to work on adding some rubrics. So she added a bunch of rubrics, and then she texted me, and she's like, "How do, how do I account for this late? You know, like the points. How I'm clicking in the rubric on Canvas, but I said, well, you've got to just take it off at the, take it off at the end. So it's um, you know, this is this is really really tough. So. I, and there's this idea of keeping a specific Dropbox for late assignments with the messaging to students that late work will be graded late and penalized. And I like that idea in theory. It's, and well, we'll just, we'll continue on. There's so, there's just so much to say on this. So, you know, here, I just pulled just from this quarter alone, here are some examples of emails that I've gotten from students at all different times. So Ellen, and, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but we did lose your screen share. So if you, could, oh. if you could pop your slides back up, I think when you went to look at the chat, it closed your sharing. Oh, okay. I've no, got no it. Worries. I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. I know this is share. different than, this is different than last time where I can't seem to see it at the same. I, I know. Yeah. Oh, no. I can't That's see okay. it. Okay. There we are. Okay. Just pop okay. into full screen view and we're good. Yes. So here, okay, so as we were saying, here is a, an example of some of these emails. And I mean, this is, you know, my students start their quarter and the entire quarter's worth of work, and somebody else said this too, the entire quarter's worth of work is available to them. So I, it just, you know, it's typically out of, as we know, you know, the emergencies happen. There's no question. And I had it happen to me too when I was a student and I, I was like 20 and I remember, I mean, well, I mean, I had a tragedy happen and I remember, you know, what that was like. And so I, I know that life happens. The majority of it is due to lack of preparation and planning because again, it kind of blows my mind that my entire quarter's worth of work is available, but it's sort of this, this, um, idea of, well, I'm just going to do it right before, or believing that you actually don't need as much time on it as what you actually do need. So the next question that I had is, what types of emails do you receive? And what is your, you know, when do you receive them? And what is your response to them? So go ahead and put those answers into the chat or um, raise your hand and we'll call on you to speak. Uh, looks like I saw somebody's hand up just a second ago that we may have missed from the last round, but I'm not seeing it now, so. Oh, now I see that I can open a little Zoom group chat box separately. Okay, I think I'll be okay now. Okay. I'm still learning. <laughs> Ah, so I'm so, yes, I'm so, Marcia says, I'm sorry for your loss. I'm sorry you were having computer troubles. Oh my gosh, right? Almost every excuse possible. <laughs> no emails in the welding program. I need to come teach welding. <laughs> <laughs> in the wrong area. I'm in the wrong area. Let's see. Um... Kelly says he's been teaching for more than 20 years and has um, seen almost every excuse possible. Right, Kelly. Oh, my gosh. Right. I mean, you just and that's the thing is, how do you. How, yeah, it's a whole other. That's a whole other Ignis, right? Is how do you remain? <laughs> yeah. 
And you know, that, you know that they had to watch the last episode of Game of Thrones. That wouldn't work for me, but Stranger Things, I might buy. I might be okay. No, I'm joking. Um, oh, I, that's an interesting one, Marcia. <laughs> I don't know if I want to read that one out loud. Oh, I try um, to do the good customer service response. Oh my! Oh, oh yeah, my that's goodness! What I'm not going to read out loud for the recording. We'll just let y'all read that in the chat. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we can um, laugh out loud. Yeah. So on a, on a, on another funny note, you know the old excuse: the dog ate my homework. I actually did have a student whose dog ate her homework. I was teaching interior design, and they had to do these big um, boards with samples and stuff on it. And apparently, the dog liked the glue. And she left her project on the table and overnight the dog got into it and ate it. She brought me her project, which I'm sure was beautiful, but it had, uh, before, before the dog got to it, it, it had, um, teeth marks all over it and stuff ripped off. So that, it, that can happen. The dog yes. can eat your homework. <laughs> the dog can eat your homework. Oh my I know it, it's so strange, but it actually <laughs> did happen. <laughs> we had a good laugh about it. <laughs> My dog gates papers already graded. Oh my goodness, these are awesome. Oh, I left one on top of my car once and drove off and it landed in the street. So that's the only project I've ever killed in all of my teaching. I, I felt really bad. <laughs> so what if, so I'm loving, I'm loving hearing what your students email. What about when? When do they email you to let you know that it's late? And and are you finding the same thing I am that they're that it's just it's just, just dripping of the message i didn't allow enough time i would say it's always after the fact or of mostly course. after the fact yeah. yeah tracy says uh, students must email before the start of class if the email tells me that when they sent it they must email me the assignment that is due on the day in class <laughs> three seconds or way later a week or two out oh yes right marshall goodness when they finally notice they're when they finally take a look despite the repeated reminders. Look at your grades. Yeah, right there with you. Okay. Yes. Oh, goodness. This is so, um, I want to say it's validating, but goodness, we're just all, we need a support group. Um, yes. Oh, so this, Marcia says, I sometimes look in Canvas to see if they've even opened the assignment. I have something on this in just a moment where I have this question that I, I want us to ponder in, in just a minute. So I'll minimize that and I'll keep going. So there's a the colleague of mine who drops the points at the end. This is this there's no late work, but this is um, you know this is what she sent an example of what she says to students. So you know you can see see this here, and it sounded amazing. Like I thought, oh my gosh, this is going to solve all my problems. I'm going to completely follow this. I'm going to follow this. And then, so then I tried it and I thought, okay, you know, um, I, I probably, you know, obviously it was not the loss of a family member or, you know, a sickness or something. I, but so I tried this and I feel like it completely has not worked because I feel like once the student is late once and they let that assignment go, then they have, even though I tell them how many points are dropped, I mean, I've had pushback from the categories I will drop them in for the, meaning that in some categories I absolutely cannot drop, I just can't drop, I just can't. Um, you know, I've also had pushback on um, like the, you know, the types of assignments that I'm, I, you know, I'm only willing to do it in certain assignment types because in others, then, you know, if you really just don't do it, you won't meet the learning outcomes of this course, but it's almost like it's just not enough. You know, whatever it is, it doesn't seem to be enough. And I do drop in one class, it's as much as, you know, 30 points, which really is more than any extra credit that they could ever get. I don't do extra credit either, by the way, but, um, because they have a lot of revision. Uh, there's a lot of mastery learning in my classes and they do have revision opportunities. And again, the work is available. So, I mean, I feel like I've tried this and I thought it was the answer, but then I, you know, the, just the dropping points, but then I'm still accepting things on email and falling into that, that trap again. So, you know, here's one question that I really ponder. I mentioned at the beginning of this session that when I was um, almost 30, I was in graduate school and 
I I remember, I mean, I was a good student all the way all the way through school. I mean, I, I was a diligent student. Um, and I don't remember turning in late work, as many of you said. In graduate school, though, I realized I, there was something, there was a switch that flipped for me. And I realized that with these, you know, 20 something page papers, if I submitted them to my professors early, like we're talking two weeks or so, then they would mark them up for me with the red pen and they would give them back to me. And in that program, I mean, I was paying for it myself. I was already almost 30, so I was definitely a non traditional student. And if you got anything less than a B, it was a failing grade, so you'd have to retake the class. So the stakes were really high. So here I am 20 years later, you can do the math, my 50th birthday is this summer, as a matter of fact. Um, I just think about how that shaped my work habits, because if I have a, you know, a post-tenure report due or, or a column advancement package or a sabbatical proposal, it's due by 5 p.m. to the VP's office. And that's just the bottom line. That is when it's due. And if you don't turn it in or for grants or whatever, you don't turn it in, you don't get, you don't get the, you just don't get to do it that time then. And, you know, like on another note, um, I mean, the habits have just stayed with me whenever I do any kind of contract work, anything. I mean, I have a major project due June 1st. I started it two months ago. I have two kids. My husband's been gone for, um, he's been gone for a stretch traveling. I just know that if I risk waiting, that I'm just tempting, I'm tempting fate. So the question that I have is, I mean, I do not permit this for myself. I, I force myself to start early because of that grad school mentality, which again was later. I mean, what are the ramifications for us? When, you know, what, what are the ramifications? And we allow, we don't allow it for, many of us don't allow it for ourselves, but then, you know, for students and how, how do we reconcile that? Again, I know it's developmental. So I'm going back to the chat. Okay. So what do you think about this? They can't find the submit button. Oh, dear Lord. <laughs> oh, goodness. Last minute is human nature. Oh, Marsha, I've totally said the same thing. I know you're not sad. Yeah, I have said, I see that you're working on these at the last minute. Uh, you know, is that is that serving you? My standard weekly assignments are always due the following Monday at 2 p.m. to prevent the issue of my internet didn't work for weekend due dates, gives them the ability to go to school, library. I don't get like, all kinds of emails over the weekend. That's, oh, I'm envious. <laughs> Yeah, and then Sarah mentions options, like if it, you know, options for other, if they, uh, often it's internet connection issues, but, you know, I'm sure at all of our schools, especially hybrid and online, you pay a technology fee, so you have that option, or, you know, like my husband um, recently started teaching a business class here, and he's like, there are hot spots, he, you know, like it just, he just, it's unfathomable. But I mean, this idea of that as professionals, we have deadlines ourselves and that there are ramifications, there are consequences for us not getting those done. I know if my credit card is late, I'll pay a late fee. It makes me feel like a complete loser, but I likely won't do it again. I mean, right? It's like, this is where the, this is where the zero tolerance, tolerance policy makes a lot of sense to me from that level that if you see a you know if you see a consequence of enough zeros you are going to realize that you have to do something different and more students than ever are admitting to me i don't know if you if you all get this too but more students are just blatantly admitting to me similar to the game of thrones comment that it's like you know i fell asleep before i could submit it and you've just told me that you've waited until the last minute or, you know, they, they'll, oh, I went out to play basketball with a friend. I came home, I fell asleep. I fell asleep is, has become a, a, a huge one that they're just bold. They just say it. So as professionals, we are allowed variances on occasion, depending on the task. Totally true. I guess the question is, and my colleague who wrote the email about, I'm so sorry for your loss, her thing was, but what does it do to the perception of us as professionals and work, our, the perception of our work ethic? And that's something that we, you know, we are 
seasoned. We're, we've dialed it in for the most part between the education that we've had. Whatever our habits are, we've dialed those in. But for students who are developing to realize what that, right, that work ethic, what is the perception? How do you want to be perceived as a professional? How does the student want to be perceived? And I question that so much that, you know, that struggle. Homework really isn't my thing. <laughs> I've heard that too. So yeah, I mean, it's, you know, it's a hard line to toe to not just teach our content, but then have to teach them these soft skills and to back up against this question of, we're teaching them to cultivate work ethic. I teach adults and life happens, repeat offenders tend to not succeed in my courses, even as professionals, life still happens and we get tolerance. It's true, it's true. Once in a while is one thing, but if it's repetitive, I, again, I just, question the, I just question the message about perception and work ethic. Um, it's tough. There are some assignments, Sarah says, that are meant to be turned in on the day that we discuss it in class. They can't be turned in late. For most assignments, I just take off points. I put that in the rubric. They're motivated to turn it on time. That's a great idea. But if they've had trouble with whatever, they can still turn it in and earn 75%. Um, yeah, and it's on them if they decide not to do it. What a great point, Marcia, about so many soft skills that are concerning work online students work when they want totally totally true oh goodness Min or maximum 75 percent right so that's where the threshold starts of you know yeah so if they lose points then it's even less than 75 percent but then of course they've had more time yes councils repeat offenders i know i when students have come to my office and have said you know, I've been so stressed out over um, the fact that they're turning in things late. I try to take a step back with them and say, "What? let's look at the bigger issue here. What is going on in your life that is not, that is not prioritizing, that's not helping you prioritize this work? All right, so I'll move on. So this was what I was referring to earlier of talking about um, this idea of enabling. So on my Facebook feed, a colleague of mine posts this. It's, um, you know, it's in the evening. And so there's that, there's apparently in the Canvas Teacher app, there's this little circle that shows the students who haven't submitted the assignment yet. I did not know that that existed and I've been using Canvas since we adopted it here at Highline. I was like, wow, this is interesting. So she sent them an email, like she says at 8.30 and she, she messaged the student who had it, hadn't completed yet. I, am, I, I should ask her, but I'm assuming she's got a midnight deadline like so many of us do. I'm with you in spirit as you complete this assignment, my friends, you've got this. And she was so excited about it. And for a moment, I was excited about it. But then I had, you know, I just, well, I'll tell you where I landed in a minute. So I'm also working on this Quality Matters review right now. And this instructor um, from another part of the country uses this uh, program, uses this um, called Remind. And it's, you know, to, I mean, same sort of thing. And I really thought, wow, like these are, you know, this is these are cool tools. And then I struggled and I was like, okay, wait a minute. You know, like, is it enabling? A boss isn't going to, you know, supervisor isn't going to, you know, give the gentle reminders or, I mean, may, maybe some, but in most cases, you know, we're, we're, professionals expected to do our work or you know when I asked my colleague who posted on Facebook about this she said my gosh you know I so appreciate a reminder from a colleague that's hey we've got this due tomorrow um and so like I don't know and she then she said well you know that when based on my doing that and messaging those students at 8 30 at night I had a hundred percent submission rate so I'm just wondering, what, what do you think about this? How much responsibility do, should we have to remind students? Are we enabling them? Are we being helpful? I don't think that there are concrete, I mean, I, I'm sure there's not a concrete yes or no on this, but I'm just wondering. 
Okay, so I think it's okay to remind, we often remind each other about deadlines. So Ruth, when, like when would the, I mean, I email my students at the beginning of the week and often in the middle and, you know, for my hybrids, I see them in class. It doesn't seem to matter. So when do we remind them? And, and you know, like my colleague did this at 8.30 at night for, you know, an, a, for a deadline that was that evening. Are we, are we training students to rely on that with some of these tools? Many of my students haven't been in school for many years. I remind more in my intro classes. Do at midnight, I remind in the morning. But then, you know, so I have a question about that. Like, you know, what if, what if you miss, like, what if we miss it? Like, we put the onus on us to do that instead of deferring that to them. And I'm, I'm the same, I remind too, but then I, you know, then I, I get nervous if something goes on in my life where I suddenly can't do it that morning or that, you know, I mean, then I, then I wrestle with myself and, you know, wrestling the ongoing dilemma of late work, right? Then I wrestle with myself and I say, but wait a minute, you know, this has been up since the beginning of the quarter. We've been talking about it. They know that this is coming. Do I have to remind them the, remor the morning of? So, Remind them face to face and online 24 hours. We set a calendar reminder through Google. I would love, yes, yes, yes. Scheduling an announcement. <laughs> Teachers feel guilty. I know, right? We do, I do feel guilty. Then it's like, oh, I didn't remind them it's on me, but then is it really on me that, you know, I, uh, the struggle is real, the struggle is real. <laughs> So yeah, I like the scheduling, the announcement. I haven't used announcements in a long time. I do, e I, I do emails and then I, I have it uh, set to also send them an email in their campus email too. And I email frequently, I'm kind of irritating in that way. I'd rather err on the side of you know communicating more. Go figure, I'm a communication professor. Um, I should pro probably remind more, Crystal says, but I think everyone learns these skills differently. I would learn from failing. Totally, me too. I would learn from failing and knowing not to do it anymore, but it deflates some students and reinforces doubts they already have. So the reminders would be better for them. The second chance would be better for them and maybe prepare them for other instructors who don't accept late policies. I feel guilty too. Gosh, we all feel guilty. Um, set discussions in Canvas that count as students to do, as student to do dates for reminders. Well, goodness, I think I need to look more into Canvas, clearly. <laughs> I need to look more into Canvas. Um, perhaps the ones who need reminding are also the ones who do. Yes, 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 Ruth. Oh, my goodness. Because I'm an annoying emailer. I am. And then the ones that say, well, I didn't see it. So I have an assignment that they have to do the first week where they have to send me an email in professional email format, and they have to tell me how they have forwarded, how they've set up their, their notifications from Canvas. That's one of the items that they have to write to me about in this email. And it's solely for the purpose of ensuring that they have a mechanism to receive notifications, emails, et cetera. I send an email summarizing. Um, yes, I do that too. I do that too. Here's updates. Here are updates for this week. Oh, totally. About the reminders for students in an online course, Christine, it's a courtesy. Yes. I mean, I, then again, again, I'm an irritating emailer. They hear from me all the time and I do screencast videos all the time, whether they watch them, I don't know, but I do that. Crystal says I should do that as part of my email assignment, but ask for a screenshot. Yes, I have found it's been a game changer to do that because that, now there's no excuse because if they completed that PEF assignment, and I make it worth like five points, but if they complete that, then I know that they have set something up. Uh, the, Mark says the assignments have a consistent allotted time from when they're assigned to when they're due. Everyone knows it. It's on them. If they don't turn it in, no reminders given. I think we guess we're kind of harsh. No, I want to be, I want to be this. I want to emulate this more because I feel like I suffer the consequences of my um, inability to toe the hard line. And then again, I sit there with that inbox full of late work or, you know, as someone mentioned earlier that if we, if I set up a separate discussion where they could submit, I would just have that at the end of the quarter. It's like it would never be over. And I want to be more of that because I do think that the consequence is an important lesson and sets, you know, they have to, 
have to be deadlines on the outside. That's just the way it goes. So speaking of the outside, I so my colleague who um, the one who wrote you know the email about loss, uh, you know I'm sorry for your loss. So she's um, she's a great mentor to me, and you know and she drops the point, you know, she's the one that drops the points at the end. And she gave me this research article and it's older. So I have something a little more current, but looking at, you know, the workplace and why, um, you know, the reasons why new college graduates either don't get to stay in jobs or don't get promoted. And I've always thought that this was really interesting, you know, because there are themes of lateness in here, whether it's late to work or, um, you know, missing assignments or deadlines. But then I asked the librarian to help me with something a little bit more current. And this was a, um, a piece out of, I thought this was interesting, out of the Irish Times. And uh, they studied about 22,000 people. And, you know, the higher levels of procrastination were associated with lower salaries, shorter duration of employment, and a greater likelihood of being unemployed or underemployed rather than working full time. And then when we were talking earlier about this idea that, sure, a supervisor might give us leniency if we are late. Yes, of course. And life happens and life happens to adults. I get that. But if it's repetitive, it, keep, it keeps happening, what is the ramification? And what this article said, what I have here on the right-hand side, that you, know, you then are viewed as someone who cannot be, who just, you know, you may not have the opportunities then. And I feel like, how can we set that up while students are in school to get that, you know, to, to understand what that, what the ramification is, or is that even possible? So what are the solutions? And I have, um, I'll have a few more slides, but I'll check our, I'll check our chat, see what some of the thoughts are that are rolling in. Yes, Marcia, so same for me. If the student is facing something that's more of a longitudinal issue, then definitely I sit down with them and I ask them for a proposal. What do you think is reasonable? What should we let go? Um, and Sarah's saying that students get, they, they say they get too many announcements. I think that what I'm finding is students absolutely don't realize many students don't realize that in the workforce that email is still king you know email is still a primary tool of communication and you will get a lot of them and that's not the way that they that's not the way that they communicate so they don't realize that that's still a very big deal in the workforce um Oh, A.W., I tell them at the beginning, I'm not going to helicopter teach them. They're adults and should be responsible to check the course website. Yes, amen, my goodness. I send reminders. They have a week to do the work and Canvas has the deadlines in there. I, I know, I, I'm right there with you. I feel the same way. Um, uh, I hand out an, an assignment reminder sheet on the first day of school, encourage my students to make copies. Works well, who are the ones that are on top of things. Yeah, text, texting, Snapchatting, email is a dinosaur, but my goodness, it is so it is so prevalent still in industry, and they're going to have to get used to that influx. So, I'll. Um, what are the solutions? I. Here are some of the things that I've <laughs> I've been thinking of. Some of you know. Um, an assignment on an assignment <laughs> on, on, on procrastination and time management, you know, something where I really, um, I don't know, that just adds more work. They might be, <laughs> they might be late, right? Um, I, I mentioned this in the chat and shoe that we had about this. I like that I almost wish that I could trick them to like have a deadline, have them complete it, but then make that not the real deadline. I remember somebody totally laughed out loud in that meeting when I said that, but let them see how it would feel to like, okay, what if, what if you could feel this being done? And that's where I sort of got to with my colleagues, um, the 830 at night. Would I use the tool in that way? No, I wouldn't because I do worry about the enabling factor, but that's me. However, what I was thinking with that tool, with messaging students who haven't submitted, is what if I went even earlier than it's due and messaged them and say, how would it feel for this to be done right now? What could you do with that time? 
what else could you get done? How would you feel about not procrastinating? I don't know. I don't know if that's kind of like, you know, a little stalkerish or I'm not sure, but I was thinking about that. Would I you would I feel more comfortable using the tool that way? Like to to maybe go, you know, if it's due at the end of the week, message them like Monday or Tuesday if I know that we've gone over it, which, you know, typically we all, we have and I give them a good lead time. But, you know, how would it feel to have this done right now? You know, what what would what would what would that say about your work ethic to show that you're early and to start setting up this habit? And then um, another colleague once, you know, they accept late work, but then there's an, a reflection on how they can resolve the bigger issue. So, whoops. So what, um, let me go back. So what, what are your thoughts for some maybe, you know, less, um, less, I don't know, less known bonus points for early work? I love that idea. Like I have to think of how, like how many, how many bonus points would there be? Because I don't want, I also don't, I don't want there to be an inflation issue either. So I don't know, but that, but yes, I mean, you could get the intrinsic motivation part and get the actual reward. So what are some other ideas? I know we're, we've got about nine minutes and the rest of the time here is for open, just open bantering of what we think. Yes, Astrid, all, everything I do is submitted online also. Same thing, and yes. When you say both are prompted by Canvas, um, something else, then um, something else you have Canvas set up to reminders. Absolutely, I would be glad to share the article. Definitely, I'm happy to do that. I, okay, so some sort of sliding scale for early work. So then we're back, you know, we're back at this idea of a bonus, which I, you know, I mean, and, you know, yeah, I. I can see it. I do. I just, it's just, I'm, I'm trying to think where would that fall? Um, reflection to resolve the problem. It's more work, but a skill building opportunity in order to get a grade, they have to do this extra reflective work. And Sarah, I wonder also what then, like, if that, if the fact that every time they turn something in late, would they do that in succession? That they turn in one late assignment, have to write a reflex, reflection, then they do it again. Is that then, um, a lesson in and of itself because you're then turning in late work, you're already late and you are having to write this reflection. Is it every time or is it just once? I love that idea. But yeah, Chris says a lot of students are, are self-deprecating. And again, you know, the ones that are just saying, oh, I, I fell asleep. Well, I should, you know, um, this is for Sarah Aiken. I was asking about the extra reflective work. Do they, re do they do that every time if they're repeat? If oh, no, it's not every time. Yeah, so um, yeah, they're bold. You know, they're bold about why they missed it. Game of Thrones, fell asleep, went to play basketball. Um, we just hammer <laughs> Mark out. We hammer them with point loss. Yes, I mean, that's the thing is that is the, you know, that is, just laying down that hammer, right? That's black and white. You, you know, you have lost points. This is hurt. Your habit is hurting your grade. I want, I need to, I want to get there because the, the opposite of what I'm doing, because the opposite of that is hard as continues to hurt me. Somehow the points don't seem to matter until the, yes, right, Crystal, because they come and they say, oh, you know, then they finally take a look and say, oh my goodness, you know, having students create a pacing chart for themselves. I'm going to grab that. Um, I want to grab the link to that article for all of you while we're here. Um, Gee, Ellen, you're doing my moderator job for me. Oh, is that okay? I was just going <laughs> to no, grab it. Is do that it. okay? No, you're awesome. No, you've been doing your own chat. I've, I've just been sitting here enjoying the show. That's unusual. <laughs> um, I'm going to actually copy. Well, I think it's the communication professor in me, probably. <laughs> All right. So no, it's, it's, it's awesome. It's fantastic. So that's that one. And then I have the other one from the Michigan. Um, we have a daily points sheet. So the students are faced daily with their lack of time. <laughs> 
Tell me, I want to know about this daily point sheet. Yes, right, Astrid, they want extra credit. Yes, I don't do extra credit because I'm dropping points. They have tons of revision. So I don't, I haven't done extra credit in years and years and years. Yeah, and Carolyn says, and students need to learn the consequences of being late. If you're late to work, you lose money or you're even fired or you don't have, um, you don't, you just don't have the opportunities like that article said. And Sarah Swanberg says, I asked my students to turn in a weekly goals chart. Are you passing? What do you have to do to pass? God, for my kids are great <laughs> oh my goodness gracious. So we have about four minutes left. Um, I do see that Christine Schaefer uh, raised her hand quite a while ago. I was having some computer problems. Oh, I'm sorry. I can see the chat. I couldn't see I the think hand. we might have missed that. I'm not sure how long her hand's been up. So um, Christine, if you still have a question or would like to speak, go ahead and take the mic or go ahead and type your comment into the chat. I'm so sorry we missed that earlier. It's okay. Can you hear me now? We can. I, I really appreciate this discussion. I don't have anything to add other than in my online class, I have due dates on the same day for assignments. And then I leave the posting open for one additional 24 hour period for allowing late work. And then I close it and I say in my syllabus, you can be up to 24 hours late and that's it. That's a cutoff period. And then I still have extreme cases of people being hospitalized and things like that, in which I still um, tend to give them additional time. Can I ask a hard question? Do you ever feel like that punishes you? Sometimes I feel like my leniency punishes me. I mean, I'm very diligent about my grading also. I mean, I typically grade by the next day. I, I, um, I have a child that goes to school on a ferry. I am up very, very early in the morning and my life just doesn't facilitate you know, a lot of flexibility even for me. And I feel like with the late work, it's like I become punished and that becomes really hard for me. Yes, I'm, I, I'm I agree. perfectly That's honest fun. with you. I'm being really transparent. Right. No, that is tough. I agree. It's something we all struggle with in just keeping ahead of our grading stack. It's a big pile. I don't have an answer. <laughs> <laughs> right. No, I know. It's, um, it's, it's a really, really hard one. No, I, so Cynthia says, I have a no late work policy with several extra credit assignments. When they beg or give excuses about missing something, I just encourage them to walk, watch for the extra credit to make up the points. So yeah, I mean, I don't do any extra credit because I feel like there are so many mechanisms there, but I can see where that, how, how do they respond to that? Like, does that work? Do they not beg or give excuses anymore? Do they, do they do the extra credit assignments? Right, Slacker, Marcia says slackers won't do the extra credit. All right, so we are actually out of time. Um, I did put Ellen's contact information into the chat for you all, and this has been an excellent conversation. Um, we can hang out for a minute and talk some more if you all want, um, but I do need to officially close the webinar out here in just one sec and um, tell you about next week's webinar, and then we'll turn off our recording. And anybody wants to stay in chat, please feel free to do so. Um, Ellen, did you have any additional slides you wanted to touch on? I, think I didn't, I was all finished, but I'm hurt. While you're chatting, I'm looking for that Michigan study also. Okay. It's older, but it, it, it might be, you know, it's, it's interesting. <laughs> So I'm looking for that because I have it posted in my Canvas course, so I will okay. just be, yeah. No worries. I'm going to go ahead and take over um, the screen share from you then, if that's all right. Sure. My computer's being really slow. I am having some trouble with it, so um, I'm going to, um, oh, my puppy just came in to join me. If you can <laughs> call her jingling in the background, somebody just let him in. Oh, I found it. Okay. So you you got that link? I do. So I'm okay, going, yes. Perfect. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and um, you can put that into the chat then. And let me just tell you um, about next week's presenter. Um, join us next Thursday. We've been back to back for the last couple of weeks and we've got um, next Thursday and then two more Thursdays coming up. So join us on Thursday, May 30th for Will the Test Be Multiple Choice? Fully using Canvas quiz statistics to measure student learning. And that will be with Melissa Ziegler. And um, she'll be joining us from um, 
Tacoma Community College. So be sure to tune in for that. And then here's contact information for myself and for Kelly, should you have any additional follow up questions. And then just a reminder that you can find um, the recording on the blog and we thank you for attending today. Sorry, my mouse is a little um, <laughs> finicky today. It's extra sensitive. So um, thanks again for being here. And um, but listen, again, am I able to share a P am I able, it's actually a PDF because it's a, it's a, it's um, the actual PDF of that study from Michigan State. Yes. Um, am I able to share that? Yes. If you want to send it out right now, um, if you go, um, can do you have your chat up? I do. Okay. If you go to the more tools at the bottom right okay. of the chat. Okay. Um, and I'm not oh, sure. Share if you can, file. Yeah, there's a share file there. Can you see it? Because I didn't make you a co-host, so I wasn't sure if you could see it. Yeah, I absolutely okay. can. Let me see if I can get that over. Yeah, go ahead and try that and um, see if you can go ahead and push that out. Yep. And uh, yes. So this is that full research study from it's. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's a, it's a sizable file, but I post this in my start here. Um, okay. Is it showing up? Um, yes, it is there. I just yes. saw it come in. So awesome. Great. Like I said, my computer's lagging just a little bit. So people might have seen it before me. I am um, going to go ahead and turn our recording off, though. But before I do that, I just want to thank everyone again for attending. We had an awesome turnout today. And Ellen, thank you again. It's always such a pleasure to have you. You're such an engaging speaker. So thanks for joining us. And I think this was a fantastic conversation around a really hard topic that I think a lot of teachers struggle with. Oh, I feel like we need a support group. Where can we all meet? <laughs> well, that can be your next project. Where can we all meet? <laughs> the Light Work Support Group. All the right, we're going to go ahead group. and turn off the recording.